in this session, we will discuss the contribution of universities. In the uh, subject that is, has been given by MHRD, it is written, uh, contribution of universities to the higher education sector. We know that in, uh, there are contributions of universities in diversity, uh, even within the society, and there are also, it's not that university has done everything very nicely. There are also faults of the universities, incapabilities of the universities, or, or other limitations of the universities, which we need to understand, because we are dealing with a system uh, which uh, by itself you will see gradually that it will not be able to solve all the problems in the society. If we think that university is the savior of the world, then it's not. But uh, it can promote ideas, so we will consider those ideas. So, uh, the word university is uh, derived from, I think you know, that this Latin word, universitas. And uh, the, there is a, in fact, it comes together with uh, the earliest version that you see of the reference to the university. It comes with this form. Universitas magistrorum et scolari, which roughly means community of teachers and scholars. And universities, the name itself implies it's some sort of a mini cosmos or mini universe. And the mini universe of what, if you ask? It, it, uh, because it is, it, it, it is the community of teachers and scholars, we can roughly infer that it's a, it will be a mini universe of knowledge. Or mini universe of people, we can also think about people. That university means that a good university is that university where, in fact, the, all the people who can contribute significantly or who can contribute the best from the different parts of the world, all could be a member of that university that way. So that way, university is like a, a small universe, a small cosmos. And we know now, it is now, it is coming in a package of uh, teaching, learning, research and outreach. So, yeah, the modern university roughly, these are the features, basically, features if you talk about this. So, the question is, has it reached the excellence in the ventures or has it complicated the situation? There could be two ways, that it has, initial years of Oxford and Cambridge, none of the women were allowed. Uh, no, it was a firm no. And even Jews were not allowed. There was a firm restriction against Jews. And there was, uh, I mean, it was strictly on religious ground. But then things changed drastically thereafter. <coughs> what led to this change? That is the precise question. Uh, in the meantime, Galileo Galilei came. He came to the University of Pisa. And as we know, he first tried the scientific uh, ventures. He looked through the telescope look to the uh, stars, look to the Saturn and its rings, uh, how these are formed, the phases of Venus, and uh, uh, he studied all these, and for, he also studied the sunspots. In addition, he also studied for the first time, uh, although this was then not uh, exactly called I mean, physics, but then uh, it was at that time called natural philosophy, but then the words which are frequently used nowadays, velocity, gravity, free form, principle of relativity, inertia, projectile motion, and properties of pendulums, which are formed the basic core of physical, uh, physics studies. He studied, I mean, he introduced it. So, this is a definitely a big contribution of the university towards the formation of scientific spirit. But they're not, if we, if we say that everything uh, at that time, all scientific uh, thinking came from the university, this will be a misnomer. Let us not be under the illusion. Because Descartes, for example, René Descartes, he was the, um, he was a mathematician, philosopher, and a scientist. And he studied more or less away from the university system. Uh, 
and his uh, as we know those who are in the uh, coming from philosophical background is almost called the father of modern western philosophy and his meditation of first philosophy continues to be the standard text at almost all university philosophy departments yeah, and his best philosophical statement as it were is called cogito ergo sum uh, i think and therefore i am this is the statement that he made so all these he made and he also introduced strongly the field of mathematics the cartesian coordinate for example the very thing is called after him he is also credited with the father of analytical geometry which was uh, which ultimately led to the growth of calculus infinitesimal calculus so all these were done by him but he did it strongly outside the university system so it's not true that university system led to all forms of knowledge and some forms uh, were created even outside but in universities one of the main defects at the time and even now in most of the indian universities including possibly ours is that when there is a uh, there is no dialogue between science and arts or commerce whatever they if there are divisions we do not talk to them we talk only amongst ourselves even then gradually focus uh, narrowing the focus to physics physics people will not talk even to chemists uh, or mathematicians they think mathematicians are of lower quality so these things <laughs> come into picture so uh, also it promoted uh, and this is all this was uh, <coughs> spelled out by cp snow in uh, his famous book two cultures and all this is the two culture was the first day, uh, lecture given by him read lecture and later on it came up in the form of the book then university also promoted i really tower image uh, because we need to discuss both plus and minus points of the university so there was uh, i really tower image isolationism so you think whatever you think is fit for uh, uh, collecting knowledge you do it and forget about the world so that was the more or less the earlier approach so this flower in uh, oxford cambridge at the time and also university of paris so some brilliant things were done but some opportunities were missed because it was not discussed next came uh, in the meantime renaissance came and the industrial revolution came what did renaissance bring in renaissance if we think about there are different aspects of it so then basically if we think it brought earlier gods were in the paintings or in literature these were the religious considerations were mostly the things of discussion as it shifted to renaissance human beings their fate their destiny these were the things that were discussed and this came uh, because of a uh, movement that flourished from florence the city in italy and it happened because there were a number of people who used to throng the city uh, in the month of from the um, say june july up to uh, september this is the period when there is less of cold and uh, people used to throng there from different silk routes and they used to carry with them different sets of ideas this way this continuously discussed there and so they are evolved the problem i mean uh, desire to look at all these with man as the central being of the concern so things changed drastically from god to man next the industrial revolution industrial revolution as you know uh, the instead of the the new the, it was the transition to new manufacturing system new manufacturing system in terms of industry where big machines were created and the in the, uh, in the meantime uh, i uh, sorry newton had also come into the picture and newton could predict on the basis of his theory what should be the precise moment what should be the precise moment at when the next eclipse will occur so people gradually people wanted to believe that man is the new god man is the new god and uh, therefore 
this thinking that uh, everything should be at the center of the uh, because the human beings need to be at the center. So art should be the center of everything on, in this universe. That was the concept that was gradually coming into being. And they, whereas industrial revolution made many things simple, made lives of people very simple. For example, uh, locomotives came, trains came, uh, all these uh, shirts could be, thousands of shirts could be produced in a day, or clothing, other clothing. So these things helped. At the same time, there were other concepts. And all these slowly percolated to the university. Whereas the universities like Al Hajar University, they did not pursue this line because this was not immediately surrounding their society. This strictly happened in Europe. So European universities absorbed both these ideas of science, renaissance, and industrial revolution, which totally changed the entire outlook. So humanist approaches blossomed of the uh, Renaissance, and in fact, it, it is in praise of this Renaissance. The Jawaharlal Nehru had commented later, <coughs> very much later in the discovery of uh, India, that university stands for humanism, for tolerance, for progress, for the adventure of ideas, search for truth, stands for onward march of human race towards ever higher objectives. If the university teaches their duty delicately, then it is well within the nation. Well with the nation and the people. So, so more or less it appeared that universities can do everything. That was the idea. But then the other, uh, former lines are very, very true that if it is a, 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 a university, it needs to be a proper university, it should stand for humanity. Uh, then there is a uh, university also shown how caring it is. I think uh, some of you might have seen the film Beautiful Mind. Yes. Have you? Have you? Yes. It's about, as you know, it is about uh, a professor of the university called uh, in the university university. I forgot the name. Which was the university? Yeah, anyway, a U.S. university uh, where John Nash, Professor John Nash, was working. John Nash was very clever at mathematics, and he was very popular among his students. He was a brilliant teacher. But then, as he went along, as he went along, at some point of time, he developed some mental problems. And, he, and, uh, it, was, and it was such that at some point of time, he was very violent. Okay. Now the big question was there, how universities should decide? This is an example. That here was a person who is a good teacher, good researcher, and he, he has got a potential for developing as one of the finest brains in mathematics. But then he has developed mental problems. So what university should do? One immediate uh, answer was that he should be thrown out of the university. That is an easy answer. It's like we do. Uh, even for some students do not behave properly, what we normally do, we throw out. But uh, we forget that we are just passing on the problem to the university, uh, to the society. So what should be done? This was the question that came to the university. And uh, the film itself shows how it was solved. So he was given all the care. <coughs> university decided that here is a brilliant mind. We should support him, nurture him, because he's a good teacher. And he's a potential, he has the potential of uh, being the finest, uh, one of the finest mathematical brain of the century. So we need to support it. So all medical support was given, whatever was necessary. Although he was very violent at that time, he used to, you know, violently hit students and even teachers, fellow teachers. Even in spite of that, the university persisted. And after two, three years, gradually, some kind of sanity uh, came back to him. And he started working again. And it was now that he found the basic foundations of the game theory for which he was given the Nobel Prize. So you can see the implications because he was dealing exceptional people in the term of faculty. Faculty is no, it's not because you are here, I'm trying to flatter you. 
But generally, uh, the kind of people that come to the university, they're exceptional people, they're exceptional thinkers, they're supposed to be at least. So these people need to be supported at any point. That is how the university system works. So you were asking questions, how the university should be a good university, you know, ranking university. I do not know if in any of the Indian universities, uh, including where I was, uh, whether we have been able to show some kind of this kind of justice. Uh, so that also matters. So the universities needs are teaching us many things. One is to teach humility. One is to teach how to care, take care of both students and faculty members because they are exceptional people. Uh, by now, the metrics of the universities are well known, understood, well understood. Teaching learning was molded into a new interact, interact, interactive time, especially with the burgeoning of ICT. You know, so knowledge has now become possible from the best in the world of the nation. New inventions and discoveries and new thoughts have come in gallows. Applications of these have enriched the world and civilization. So universities are the places of independent thinking, of tolerance, of focused discussion, and of arriving independent decisions. So in a way, these are the, this is a platform where, in theory, all solutions of the world can be found. In theory. And top universities of the world are now centers of the efforts for making a better world. As we look to the horizon, <coughs> We see a future where the fundamental science unlocks vital new knowledge and unleashes unprecedented innovation. Okay. So what are their aims? They have said where climate change aims to climate action. So what are the climate actions needs to be taken? They have tried to list it out. Universities cannot by itself do it, so they, they have done it. Where clean energy is as universal as the sunrise. So photovoltaics they have made, and if you see the kind of innovations they have done, I think within three, four years, the photovoltaics is going to replace many of the electric applications, and also will run cars in the MIT. You can go to the website, what, is the, what are their achievements, and uh, where smart cities in the wise communities, and the digitally bearing dry coal advances for humanity, where we converse on ways to detect diseases before it has symptoms, to reduce cancers and inconvenience. We know that we, there have been many talks about uh, <laughs> cancer disease, uh, reduce cancer to inconvenience so that uh, it can be fully treated, and they are, they are shown their blueprint. And they have said that within two, three years, it will be possible to conquer cancer. Well, Alzheimer's itself is just a memory that you forget about Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is conquered. And that is what they have, they have been doing. When new nano everything solves all enormous problems, that you solves your, all your day to day uh, problems, it can be solved by nano things. When daring companies of every size, create thriving industries and achieve lasting progress where prosperity is measured not in dollars but in currency of art, culture and understanding. What a profound change. And it is coming from MIT, <laughs> Institute of Technology. Goes yes, to MIT. Goes to MIT. Goes to MIT. Where quality education is radically more available and massively more effective which I think you said is in the morning, what should it Yes. And where we offer the world's undiscovered talent is a physical path to a creative future. All these things they have done beautifully. And they have not only these statements, you go to the website and read the achievements with respect to each of these. These are so inspiring. So universities are good places. But then universities are also bad places. Yes. Universities are also bad places because it could have risen to harder heights. It could have taken all the debates of the world 
and would have addressed it the way it was done 160 years back at Oxford, at Oxford era, uh, the, the 160 years of evolution uh, debate they have celebrated. So in their way, they, um, universities could have done. It has not done. 